And the city of Chicago is transforming a convention centre into a makeshift healthcare facility over concerns of a surge in infections. The first 500 beds were unveiled on Friday in the hall that has been home to the Chicago Auto Show. The centre is expected to house a further 2,500 beds and patients with mild symptoms will be transferred there from existing hospitals. According to the Johns Hopkins University tracker, there are now over 9,000 confirmed cases in the state of Illinois where Chicago is located. Right now, National Guard troops are getting ready for an expected surge of coronavirus patients in Santa Clara County. KPIX 5's Len Ramirez on how the Santa Clara County Convention Center is being transformed into a makeshift hospital. Len. That's right. The Santa Clara Convention Center normally hosts a lot of high-tech meetings and dinners and functions like that. But now, for the foreseeable future, this facility will be a hospital where a lot of non-critical COVID-19 patients will be sent to recover while other more critical patients are cared for at the hospitals. 250 hospital cots are being prepared inside the Santa Clara Convention Center's main hall. It's all part of Santa Clara County's plan to handle an expected onslaught of patients suffering from COVID-19. Well, the state is ready, especially this field hospital behind me here at the Boston Convention Center, as you mentioned, Kate Boston Hope. Now, this field hospital will serve as a relief valve to the healthcare system so it doesn't get clogged and area hospitals can focus on providing life-saving treatment for those who need it. The governor toured the new Boston Hope Medical Center, a 1,000 bed field hospital at the site of the convention center. It's already being used. Baker was joined by the Army's top general, James McConville, a Massachusetts native. Military medical personnel are working side by side here with doctors and nurses caring for patients. We are in a war against an invisible enemy. We had a lot of rumors about was the military taking over Seattle? The answer is no. They're here to help. 300 soldiers will soon transform the CenturyLink Event Center into a fully functioning hospital with nearly 150 beds, surgeons, even a pharmacy on site. The field hospital would be used to treat people who don't have the virus if the hospitals are overrun. The Army Corps said the hospital on this site would be similar to the one at the Javits Center in New York City. This would be the second field hospital in South Florida. The state already built one on the youth fairgrounds in West Dade. That site we've reported will be for people with minor injuries. Most health officials believe Florida will get its peak of infections in May, so essentially this facility would be built before that estimate. I'm reporting live on Miami Beach, Stephanie Bertini, NBC6 News. In just hours, Sacramento Sleep Train Arena will open as a coronavirus field hospital. These 400 beds are now ready to accept patients. Tonight, ABC 10's Giacomo Luca is at the arena with a look at what it will all mean for people living nearby. As we speak, a mad dash is underway inside the TCF Center to convert it into a field hospital to treat coronavirus patients. Our first look inside since FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers got to work building what could end up being a 900 bed facility. So we just started yesterday, about a third way done already with the actual partitions. Uh, we hope to be done well, by the 9th of April. And that includes putting beds into it and stuff, getting operational. There will be a curtain in, in front of each room, so there'll be like kind of more like an ER type setting. There'll be a medical bed in there, They're actually assembling them over there if they already see that. And then there'll be uh, lines running down, running backup power, so if the power building goes out, the general will be able to kick in and keep the power going, and also oxygen running down in tubes as well. So, what does that equate to a hospital? Gosh, uh, probably not like an ICU, but more like an emergency room. But still, we're not building to the hospital standards. We don't have time for that. Uh, they're keeping their most severe patients in the ICUs and the hospitals, but they want to bring COVID patients in here. Probably do some type of certification, walk through, punch list type stuff, but by the, by the 10th we should be able to put patients in beds. Setting up for a potential coronavirus surge that's happening right now, members of Connecticut's National Guard are turning a college field house into a field hospital. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarland is live with our mobile newsroom on the Southern Connecticut State University campus. Matt? Well, Kara, less than 24 hours ago, this was an empty gymnasium, a 
basically a field house that had nobody in it. Now you can take a look for yourself and see this is a mobile hospital here at Southern Connecticut State University. Now getting a first look inside the field hospitals here at the Rhode Island Convention Center and the old Citizens Bank location in Cranston. Eyewitness News reporter Logan Wilbur has more on the 1,000 extra hospital beds being prepared for Rhode Islanders. I also want to make a special note about the field hospitals, uh, which as of today, two are ready to be operational. Controls where the head of More than 600 beds at the Rhode Island Convention Center working under the license of Rhode Island Hospital and 335 beds in a facility in Cranston operating under the license of Kent Hospital as the state finalizes preparations for a potential surge in coronavirus related hospitalizations. And the Maryland National Guard is working on setting up a field hospital at the Baltimore Convention Center. There will be 250 beds to treat coronavirus patients. The University of Maryland Medical System and Johns Hopkins Medicine are jointly running the site. There needs to be more spaces to treat them. This weekend, the Maryland National Guard worked to set up field hospitals. WMAR 2 News' Aaron McPherson continues our team coverage this morning from the Convention Center downtown. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Ashley. Well, soldiers brought in the first round of equipment here to the convention center over the weekend to help transform this facility into an emergency treatment center. Now, this is the first place National Guard soldiers has brought beds throughout in the state at all, and they brought in some cots and tables as well. The goal is to have this facility hold 250 beds. Now, it will take some time for the center to be fully operational. Now, this is just in preparation since those those numbers of people diagnosed throughout our state continue to rise and we only have so much space in those hospitals. Now more on several field hospitals going up in our area to deal with the outbreak. Some of the locations include Atlantic City, Delaware County and North Philadelphia. Eyewitness News reporter Matt Petrillo is in North Philadelphia right now with more on the field hospital inside the Leah Chorus Center. Good afternoon, Matt. Hey Jim, good afternoon to you. Those field hospitals will help non-COVID-19 patients here at the Leah Course Center. Behind me, that is one of them. And we did get a look inside. Take a look at some video we got from this morning. You can see there was roughly some 250 beds inside the Leah Course Center. There are no patients yet, but those beds were set up over the weekend by PA Task Force One. Health Commissioner Tom Farley's updated numbers found 33% of hospital beds within the city's five counties are still available. Open beds in hospitals means the basketball building with over 100 workers inside sits without any cases. Gomberg says they are working with the chief medical officers of surrounding hospitals every day to monitor volume, but no patients is a good thing. If we never see a patient, that would mean the city of Philadelphia was successful in people staying at home, in doing the right thing, containing the virus. So we would consider that an absolute success. Now, just to be clear, if there is any uh, overflow of patients at one hospital, the health commissioner is asking for those patients to be sent to other hospitals and to use the Leah Cora Center as insurance. Live in North Philadelphia, Dan Koob, CBS3 Eyewitness News. You thank, thank you, Dan. But this is what it looks like now. The floor filled with beds that could be used for patients if Philly's hospitals get a surge of coronavirus patients. Essentially, this is a, it's a field hospital. Pennsylvania Task Force One, a collaboration that includes local, state, and federal resources, has been working to set up the center and stock it with supplies. There are temporary dividers, wheelchairs, and hand washing stations. So far, it's unclear what kind of patients would be sent here. We're still uh, working through the details of that. At some level, we, we don't really know until we hit that surge. Another question and a challenge, staffing. The Philadelphia Fire Commissioner says they're looking for volunteers through the Medical Reserve Corps, and it's possible local hospitals would assign staff here. The level of care that we're going to be able to provide is ultimately about how many clinical professionals we can bring to this facility and then the additional equipment that they might need to handle different cohorts of patients. The Leah Chorus Center, a landmark on campus facing North Broad Street, is being lent to the city at no charge. We're just happy to be in a position to help. Um, this issue is global, um, national, and here in our cities. Officials are hoping the beds they've now set up will remain empty. We certainly hope that this surge capability is something that uh, will essentially sit here and hopefully we'll pack it up at the end of this thing and we'll never hit that surge.
More cases than any other county, so the new Miami Beach Convention Center is being transformed into a field hospital. CBS 4's Jessica Vallejo is there live with more details. Jessica, good morning. A good morning. Well, by April 20th, this field hospital will be ready here at the Miami Beach Convention Center, and it will be able to hold up to a thousand beds. Instead of a festival in Miami Beach, the Army Corps of Engineers is turning the city's convention center into a 450 bed field hospital by April 20th. It's able to fit up to a thousand beds if needed. Instead of crowds lining up for carnival rides, there are construction crews at the Miami-Dade County Fairgrounds. They're working on building a field hospital there. Officials say right now there are no plans to open it, but it will serve as a backup in case our hospital system starts to get overwhelmed. They're building a thousand bed hospital in four days. The beds are still in the way, but construction crews are busy raising temporary walls that will be home to Boston's newest hospital. 500 beds will be dedicated to the patients struggling with homelessness, and the remaining 500 will be for other patients. 1,000 beds soon to be available for COVID-19 patients inside the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. As we speak, preparations are being made at the Morial Convention Center to convert it into a giant field hospital if it's needed Yes, I'm here at the Ernest N. Morial Convention Center, where the plan is to turn this into a giant field hospital. I think for our community, the next three weeks are incredibly critical. The next three weeks are going to determine. And it's things like oxygen and getting out of bed and walking. And this is the size of the hall. This is where it's all going. We've got 4,000 beds to go in, sorry. Two morgues. This hall is a kilometer long, you know? And there's a hall out on the other side as well. I'm not sure what's happening there. I just wanna keep you all updated. And if you're not taking it seriously like I wasn't, I think we really need to start because they're preparing for an absolute high death toll here, you know. So there we go. Excel, London. Welcome to NHS Nightingale. So this is the New Jersey Convention and Exposition Center in Edison. You can see a general layout up on this screen behind you. There's going to be a couple of these screens posted around this place. Because of the size of this place, we wanted to make sure that the staff that was working here, doctors and nurses, were able to easily find where they needed to get to. So they've been color coded into different colors for the 15 different nurses stations slash uh, areas or bays that they'll be working in. So each one of those color locations has a nurse's station attached to it, and that's the area they're responsible for.
what the Corps of Engineers has called these as alternate care facilities. The inside of the TCF center will look extremely different, at least for the next few weeks. Uh, currently, we're working on this one, which is Hall C, and there's one downstairs called Hall E, which will likely be for 400 additional. Hall C and E are being transformed into a makeshift hospital with the capacity to see at least a thousand patients during this COVID-19 virus pandemic that has changed the world. This facility is specifically for COVID patients. They are going to uh, create negative pressure in here, just like a, a hospital room, and so the patients can uh, use oxygen if needed, but they will be quarantined for other patients. Each cubicle will allow a patient to have what they call semi-privacy, with the electricity running to every station. Best we can do, we want to help as many people as we can. And the hope is that the TCF Center will help doctors to get a hold of the virus before it's too late. We're definitely eager to help. We have the ability to help, and we're going to make sure we do this um, as soon and as professionally as we can. A giant asteroid is barreling towards Earth eight times faster than a speeding bullet, passing closer to us than the satellites that broadcast this very program. But what if it were on a crash course? Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. On a sliding scale of things that can ruin your day, you may want to put this one at the top of the list. The asteroid, with the not-so-catchy name DA-14, is hurtling towards Earth right now at a rate eight times faster than a speeding bullet. And while it will miss, disaster won't be averted by much. It will graze the Earth's atmosphere Friday afternoon at about 17,000 miles out. Remember, all of those satellites out there that give us our global positioning, that tell our iPhone where we are, those are at 22,000 miles. So this is actually going to pass between the Earth and the satellites that give us our direct TV every day. That's a close shave. Hollywood loves this kind of thing. Exhibit A, Bruce Willis's Armageddon. But DA-14 and others like it are no joke. Which is why a trio of big brains from NASA, Apollo 9 astronaut Rusty Schweikert, space station astronaut Ed Liu, and bonafide rocket scientist Scott Hubbard have become the asteroid hunters, launching their own mission to find asteroids that are on a collision course with our world. This asteroid is important because it's a wake-up call that we should be looking out there. These things do hit the Earth. The last near disaster was averted by pure luck. It was 1908 and a huge asteroid made a direct hit, fortunately into Tunguska, Siberia, where a thousand miles of trees and wildlife were decimated. Amazingly, no one knew DA-14 was headed our way until a Spanish dentist and amateur astronomer randomly discovered this grainy proof a year ago. 
of all of the asteroids that are out there that come near the Earth and that can do harm if they hit the Earth, we only know 1% now. 99% of them, we don't even know where they are. As Oumuamua traveled through our solar system, it didn't follow the normal path of a typical comet under the sun's gravity. Rather, it slightly shifted off course, which couldn't be explained by gravity alone. Something else, some unknown force was also at play, manipulating the object's behavior. I cannot think of any other possibility other than <laughs> the outgassing that we find in comets, which seems to be ruled out because we don't see a cometary tail, or the pressure from the sunlight. There is no other proposal on the table right now. There should be uh, quite a lot of them right now in the solar system, and some of them could be trapped by Jupiter and the sun that act as a fishing net. And so some of these interstellar objects are bound to the solar system after the first passage that's right. Some of these interstellar objects might be right here in our solar system.
the first to know of this risk to the world. And that puts a special obligation to make sure that data, the data gets to our scientists, our professionals. This is not about retribution. This matters going forward. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to sure get this right. Sure Se ko wa le de ti mo gbe ni ti ba ni mo gbe ni ti 